drip. Let's go, go, go. It's another K Town beat. YouTube, 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 it's your boy, Mr. Outlana, I'm back, look, hey, there's been a debate under my comment section about what's a hot taper, hot tapers don't have C cups, hey, to me, if you start your guideline high, it's a hot taper, but, you know, whatever, I'm gonna show y'all what he's showing me right here, now, this is the haircut that he wants right here, now, to me, that's not faded, that's more like a, uh, this is not a high table. This is more like a burst fade, not faded, or almost, you know, south of Francis in the front. You know, I, I don't know what this haircut is, but if that's a high taper, if they saying, hey, that's a high taper, it, yeah, I, I mean, you could say that. I mean, but it ain't even faded. So it's not even a taper to me. And, and no disrespect to the barber who cut it. I don't know who cut it. But, you know, for me, the hardest part about doing a high taper, especially with hair, like when you have bulk around it. So right here though, real quick, make your first guideline with your trimmers because you want it to get real close and bald. So, you know, I use the detailers, whatever trimmer you use, that's fine. But the detailers are the truth. Y'all know what I do with the detailers. You, you see the lineups, you see it crispy, you know, I missed the outliner. But anyway, so back to what I was saying, you want to make it where it blends in the bulk to the blend. Like, like I said, that picture that he showed me, like that wasn't blended enough for me like the bulk and the fade did not go together so like right here i'm using the one and a half in order to get everything down you want it to be as smooth as possible right and and you kind of like want to use a guard that's already going to make it easy to transition i can tell from like the heaviest part of his hair to the to the lowest part where i'm trying to fade it it was about a one and a half and i angled it right and then right here after i do that i take no guard right here and i just you know make my next guideline and i bring it up a little higher but you know as i'm going up i'm actually not trying to make it like a deep deep uh guideline you know i don't want to set that guideline too hard right there and then right here i got the one guard it's open to close again and now I'm just working on like the in-between part, actually where I made the next guideline, but the in-between part behind the, the where it's the thickest at and where it starts to taper off at, right? So I wanna knock the bulk down right here. And different textures of hair calls for different techniques, right? So because his hair is, you know, over curly, super curly you know you wanna you're gonna have to work with it you know use the corners of your blade and you you're gonna have to go over it multiple times to get it to lay flat you're gonna have to use a comb to keep combing it and you know just it's gonna be a lot of repetition in in short strokes what i do you know i kind of make it look easy but it's a lot of repetition right here in me stretching the skin trying to make the hair lay down like I said, the texture of this hair, the hardest thing about it is just really making the hair lay down. And I think sometimes when I'm looking at the picture like he showed me, like I, I think people just fade the area and not fade the bulk, right? So after you get that done, you go from no guard to one guard and come back down. You know, if you still have a line there, you use the, the trimmer or or the liners whatever you call it the same thing you put the line in with you want to use that to take it out with now you can see that some of it is not faded i'm sure i'm going to use clip over comb right there just to get it to lay down the way that i want it to lay down 
right? Because that's to me that that's gonna bother me. But you see, if you look closely right there, it's still dark in area right there. So to me, I'm trying to get it out, and you see the method that I'm using to get it out. Now, if you have a spot that's you know dark, won't go away. Make sure you use your corners of your blade because this is actually a feathering technique. Because if I use the whole blade, I'm going to keep creating a line. But if I use the corner of the blade, I'm going to feather it out. I'm only picking up a little bit of hair at a time, just enough to blend it in. This is what you use to blend, right? This is it. This is this is how you get to that next level of blending, right? You use the corner of the blade because it's gonna help you out a whole lot. Now, you see I'm kind of getting it where I want. Now, here comes the clip over comb. Now, that bulk area right there, I don't like hanging up behind his ear and stuff like that. I'm gonna take it out with the clip over comb, right? And it's, it's two different techniques when you're using clip over comb also, you know, this technique you see me going up, that's more for blending, right? The same thing I was doing without the comb, I'm doing with the comb, it's still blending, right? Now, you see how everything is laying down? This is the look that I'm looking for when I do it. And I'm using the outliner, Mr. Outliner Detailing Mist. I'm just prepping his line. You can already see that his line has been compromised, right? It's already been compromised, but I'm gonna make sure to get him back. Now. On this side, we do the exact same thing. And you can kind of tell where it's heavily bulked at and where it starts to taper off at. You know, it's sticking out too much. I, I like a nice, even look. You know, so like I said, I use Clip Over Comb to achieve that. And on this side, it's the same thing. Like I said, you start the guideline high, a little bit above the ear. Make it as close as possible. That's what you want to do. Take your time with it. Then you want to come with the one and a half, knock some of the bulk down, come back, no guard, then use a one guard, open the clothes, come back to no guard to use your, your liners again to knock out that bottom line if it's still there, right? And then a little clip over comb if you feel like you need that to make it match the other side. So the, the process, you know, like I tell y'all all the time, it's the approach. My approach is... I'm, I look at it like I got to start my guideline high in order to achieve this look. So, you know, my approach is what do I have to do in order to get this look, right? Then I go into my system. The system is, you know, no guard, one guard, or, you know, my tremors, no guard. I mean, my tremors, one and a half no guard open the close one guard open the close back down the no guard you know open the close to back to my tremors you know until it's faded and then you know feathering technique or you know clip over comb so that's the system so you got your approach you got your system and then the rest of it is the execution right just making everything all both of those two things come together is the execution part so that's the ASC, how I call it. Approach, system, and execution. That's uh, Those are the three things that you need in order to get this, you know, get most of your haircuts done, at least 90%, right? So if you remember those three things, you'll get it. So we're using the same thing. It's everything with barbering is, you know, repetition and muscle memory. So for me, I can almost do this, like even if I'm having a bad day and I'm not feeling like, 100% myself, right? I could still perform at a high level because my system is the same. My repetition is the same. I, I just know what to do, you know what I mean? So get that down, get your arsenal like that, and, and you'll be okay, you know, even on a bad day. So you see, you know, we're getting this haircut together and it's coming along right. The taper is coming along good. My memory card was kind of like tripping so I had to uh, you know my memory card was tripping so I had to stop and switch it out that's why you kind of see a little glitch in there but anyway 
you know, you see me using the corner of the blade right here, the feathering technique part, that's what we're doing. Using the clip over comb in certain areas to get the look. I want it to all blend. The, the purpose of doing the high tape is to give it that, that high ball clean look, but have it painted so tough to the point to where you like it. Man, you know, you, you want that certain look. You know, the client wants that look. You want to achieve that look. So that that's it. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit, and then we're going to get into the hairline. Now on to the hairline. Normally I show y'all from the front view. I want to show you from this side because I've already, you know, I'm already over here and I just it, it is bothering me. So I'm starting from this side. But you see where it's lined. You see how I'm creating it. That's his natural lineup. Now you can tell he's been pushed back. You can tell how far back he's been pushed back. And I know the last like four or five videos I've been showing y'all, man, like people being out here butchering lines but you see how i made his line natural right there you see right here in the front you see how far back they pushed his line you can tell from the front like it's been back there and you know over there is that high you know see what i'm saying but i made the natural line you see that on that side i made the natural line on this side it's the same thing look how much it is is gone like you know everybody wants to have a crispy lineup but for me, I try to show you the, the way how to make it crispy, you know, without compromising the lineup until the hair can fill in sometimes or, you know, uh, just to give it an illusion, you know. Um, so that's pretty much what hair fibers are for. And I show you how to do it. And I'm trying to match up the two sides. So with, with and save his line at, at the same time. I want to be saved. I don't know if y'all know about that, that E-40, that I want to be saved, that Captain Saber hairline. I'm, I'm, I think I might start calling myself Captain Saber hairline. You know what I'm saying? So, man, look here, because boys be out here butchering, man. So, look, you know, um, in order to have a crispy line, you don't have to push it back into the darkest part. Like some people just feel like, oh, if I push it back to the darkest part, it's going to be crispy. But look here, when they grow back, it'd be terrible, man. And then when I got to go and put enhancements on it to make it look good, then you, you know, people want to say, oh, man, he had to use enhancements to do this, that. And, oh, man, come on, bro. Look what I'm working with. Look at what I'm working with. Man, it's terrible out here. So I don't know what's going on. The last week or two I've been getting lineups to where I had to resurrect them but um back to the lineup it's easy man just keep it simple you know don't push back and really take your time with it bro really take your time with it you see what I'm doing right here really take your time with it right and I'm not I'm not concerned if it's short right now because I know I know he's been pushed back, but I know, you see where I'm pointing the, the comb at? I know he's been compromised, right? But I know if I if I line it up the right way, I'm going to have to put enhancements on it. But when it grow back, he's going to be right. We're using the Mr. Outliner Detailing Spray again to lock in the hair fibers too. So remember earlier I had already put the hair fiber on this side so anyway we come back this is a hair atomizer somebody kept saying it was paint this is hair fiber that i'm applying to this hair hair fiber right and i like hair fiber because it builds on the hair it makes the hair look just like your hair right you see that paint don't do that but hair fiber does you know what i mean so look and i'm just gonna spray a little bit just to give it an illusion you know, of course, it's thicker in the front than on the sides because there's more hair. You want it to look natural. To me, that looks natural. Just like that right now. And I haven't really just came back and hit them with the line again, right? And we hit them with the, the 
outliner, the, the detailing mist again, just to make sure we lock the fibers in that much more. After that, we just come back with, with our liners, our trimmers, and tap it with all the line we already made previously before we even put the hair fiber, right? This is the same exact line that I made that didn't look crispy, but once I added the hair fiber to it, it was crispy, right? And after I used the liners, right? And the detailing mix, right? This is an easy way to achieve the look, right? The taper part is easy to for for you. You know, it should be the easiest part, right? The lineup is is gonna give it that look. This is what's gonna get you paid. This is the money ball right here, as they say. So last last video I was telling you that hey, you know, the dude asked me why I charge 40 bucks. This is why, because it's people out here butchering haircuts, and plus this is art, this is work, this is look what I'm using to give you the look. And you're not really paying me for just a haircut. You're paying me for my time, right? Because I can rush through your haircut and and not ch and charge you accordingly to that. You know what I mean? But I'm actually taking my time to give you the look that you that you want, right? That you saw on my Instagram or you saw on another client that you want. You know what I mean? That's that's why you pay the price. You know, you pay the price for look. It's like Jordans. You paying for the look, you know, or any other brand. You know, so you paying you. That's what you paying for. So in, in knowing that it's good material and good work, right? So the same thing on this side. We did the exact same thing, right? And we come back. We are doing the exact same thing. The same line that I made previously before the enhancements. We're going over it again after the enhancements are on. Look how sharp everything is getting. We use the detailing mist. We use the hair fiber and, and the detailers, right? If you want to kill a combination, that's it. That's going to get you the look that you're looking for every time. You know, so look, man, it's easy once you get the system down. It took me a while to get this system. I'm not going to sit up here and act like, Oh, this happened for me overnight. No, it didn't. I put a lot of work into this system. And then also, like, I can make you a sharp lineup if your hair is right, like not being compromised. I can make you a sharp lineup without without enhancements. Cause I was a barber before enhancements came out. Right? So this system been in the works for years. And you see how sharp, you see that crispy, you see that taper. Man, I'm killing the game with that, right? killing it you know so I think that's the point that I want to make this video it wasn't really so much about the taper as I went along the video now it's about the lineup and you know helping barbers not compromise the edge of like you know there's no need for that and I for certain videos I'm Mr. Captain Saver lineup Captain Saver hairline you know you know Captain Captain, get them fresh. You know what I mean? But anyway, man, like, like I say, it's kind of, you know, stressful when you see that because as a barber, you you know, me being one of the leaders in the barber community, I just, you know, I want everybody to do better. Therefore, you know, everybody can charge more and you can get the pay that you deserve. You know what I mean? And if everybody's better than we all are better and you know you can charge what you want to charge as a barber you know it, it you know and that's the goal you know you want to be able to feed your family off of this stuff you know and people don't really understand that part of it either like barbers are out here trying to they do it to feed their family this is day nine to five don't look at it like a barber just doing like a hobby or it's a hustle no this is a real job bro you got to stand behind a chair like I do for 10 hours. Like, you 10 hours straight in the same stance. You know, barely eating, not really having a lunch break because clients don't care. They just they just want a haircut. They don't care. So, like, I already know that. You know what I mean? So, for me, I charge accordingly because you don't care if I eat. You ain't for, you, you just want your haircut. Oh, man, you open? Let me, let me get a cut. You not let... Did you eat? Did you, you need something? Let me... 
oh, bro, I wait. I give you thirty minutes. You want to eat? Go ahead. You know, like people don't don't think like that. They think you just chilling at work. Like, no, I'm working, my bro. I'm working, my dude. I'm really actually working. Yeah, but anyway, back to the front of the lineup. You can see how you know this is slow. You see me barely. I'm just working it, working it, taking my time with the lineup because I want. It's Chris, but you you gotta work for that. You you don't see me rushing through his line to try to get him, you know, to to get it right. But this is the edge up. It looks a lot better than when we started, right? Both sides. But anyway, don't forget like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. You know how we do it. Until next time, love, peace, and have grease. I'm